Hello, welcome back to Marathon Man, where I'm going through Doctor Who from the very beginning, and you join me as we reach the first of Season 6's two epic-length stories. I wasn't really expecting this. Um, as I've said, this isn't the first time I've marathoned Doctor Who, and one of the joys of doing it from the very beginning is to see what sort of changes uh, in your opinions have happened since the last time you marathoned. Um, the invasion I've had a, 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 an odd relationship with, certainly on the last marathon, but it's safe to say that it's the most recent viewing that sticks in your head. So when I came to doing this marathon, I wasn't really expecting this. Having put season five behind me, even though I did enjoy season five a lot more on this marathon, I was still really, really enthusiastic about season six. Okay, yeah, sure, it starts wobbly with the Dominators, but even that story holds, you know, quite a bit of treasure. Like I, uh, for example, love how it feels so vastly different from uh, the season five format. And in that, it kind of does feel like a breath of fresh air, even though it's not very good. And then there's the mind robber, which I happen to think is like one of the pinnacles of Doctor Who in its entirety. And then we continue ahead with a really solid run of stories, with one exception, later on in the season. That's how I'd always approached season six, except last time, and hopefully I'll be able to sort of explain why in this video. Last time, uh, the invasion struck me by surprise as being a more a premature wobble, one that I didn't think would happen. See, when I think of the invasion, I think of a successful road test for next season's format, a successful showcase, the most successful showcase for the Cybermen since their debut. I think of the uh, solid introduction of Unit and the welcome return of Lethbridge Stewart, who's now been promoted to, uh, so we can call him what he is, the Brigadier. I adore Tretton's Doctor. He has been fantastic, and I know that there have been stories I have raved about, though admittedly nowhere near as many as in Hartnell's era, which I, I am missing more and more. Enjoying season five more than ever has helped his era jump up uh, quite a few notches in my estimations, and it was with that in mind that I was even more excited um, about hitting season six and reaching what I thought were uh, a lot of its highs in a concentrated burst, like all the more. And so this point of the marathon was always one I was super happy to have reached because like I'd always considered it a like knockout one two of the sublime the mind robber and the solid and enjoyable the invasion except this time I approached it with a degree of trepidation because on my last marathon like I said the unthinkable happened. That second punch this story the invasion it missed its mark. It's too long, really. I know there are longer stories, but this is crying out to be a six-part story, not eight. And I, I know why it's eight, but it shouldn't be. You also don't hear me wishing a story was six instead of four, to be honest. So I rarely think that a six-episode story has been the optimum length, but here it would be great. The first four episodes work in setting up an atmosphere, clues to who's really behind everything for those paying attention, and a very decent villain in Vaughan before the reveal of the Cybermen at the end of four. That works brilliantly, but have the reveal of them at the end of episode four kind of bleed into the image of them in front of St. Paul's and then have the last two episodes a race against time to stop them? I honestly think that would have been excellent. As it is, I can't help but feel that it's two episodes too long, made further evident to me by the fact that the nail-biting climax where they destroy the big Cyberman ship sort of amounts to uh, all of the cast looking really worried at a clock for 12 minutes. Now that's only one minute of episode time, but it's still enough to grind the action to a bit of a halt. This is quite a big misstep and it only highlights to me that the story is, you know, kind of overstretched and the pace of it has never quite been as quick as I had been led to believe and used to believe. 
So many episodes result in it moving slightly too slowly to be outstanding. No question that it's diverting enough, but it really does begin to plod. The example above in episode 8 being but one instance. Now there are other examples, like I got bored of watching Vaughn's wall slowly move aside again and again and again. It's done a good job of fooling me in the past, but these days I can't deny it. I think the invasion is a bit slow. It's my opinion that the invasion is one of Doctor Who's greatest optical illusions. Not as much happens in it as it would have you believe, but, and this is important, and especially if you're watching this sort of like apoplectic that uh, I'm denigrating such a classic, this is important. Despite the realizations about the pace, which I still agree with, it's still really good. Yes, this time that second punch of the Mind Robber and the Invasion 1-2 fully landed. I am back on board. The Invasion is great. It's the stuff along the way, to be honest. There are some really great ingredients here, and it does a grand job of uh, setting up a really, uh, really good atmosphere early on. So you've got the, the mysterious company, you've got uh, the security guards that are willing to murder off their turf. It's all set to really ominous music, and it all generates a what the hell is going on vibe. And there's a lot going on here, and that really helps the story uh, carry its first four episodes. The first half of the story is carried by uh, it just being really good. There's a lot going on, but it doesn't play its trump card too soon. Now, that trump card is fairly obviously the Cybermen. Now, like the Wheel in Space, they don't show up right away, but unlike the Wheel in Space, the invasion actually puts the effort into making the story work without them before throwing them into the mix. Without the Cybermen, even if the Menace were the great intelligence or just not revealed, Unit vs Vaughn's plans would be enough for a good story. That the Cybermen show up ticks off the box for a returning foe, but it can't be said to be all the story relies on, which is sort of been the case for a lot of rematches. Here, they're used very well, and they strangely act as a shot in the arm. Their last appearance was, in my opinion, shoddy. It was a slightly lacklustre story, and they themselves were rubbish. By the time they show up here, the story is four episodes deep, and has done a good job of building ambience and getting itself started under its own steam. The Cybermen showing up when they do really works, and it helps rehabilitate them after a few shoddy appearances. They're the best looking Cybermen since the originals, I think. Uh, they're still not quite as good as the 10th Planet vintage, but this is the story in which they are used best, and I am including their debut in that. It is the best Cyberman story so far. They're still not quite as formidable as I would have liked them to have been since episode two of the 10th Planet, and while some of their stories have been enjoyable, they haven't really been given one that showcases them uh, at their best, showcases them properly, like really well, like the Daleks have. If they had, they probably could have eclipsed the uh, Daleks in my estimations, but they haven't had a story which uses them as well as the Daleks have had stories which use them. They're definitely a more intriguing idea for a monster than the Daleks, in my opinion. They just haven't really... It feels like they haven't properly been treated with the respect they deserve. That said, there are some different angles taken with them here which help to add to them as monsters. Vaughn's safeguard against them turning on him by infecting them with emotions leads to an insane Cyberman roaming the sewers, and that is a very effective image. As is the money shot of them emerging from the sewers and marching before St Paul's Cathedral, made all the more striking by the eerie quiet dawn which precedes it. What a shot that is when it arrives, and in my opinion, ten times as good as the Daleks in Westminster. Now, like I said earlier, I've had a fairly complicated relationship with the invasion over the last few years. Used to love it and fully subscribe to the opinion that it was a classic. And then last time had a sort of the crushing feeling that it was more a succession of fine moments and images, uh, enough to become iconic, but that didn't necessarily coalesce into a supremely satisfying story. A good story, no doubt, but. I, still, I just felt like it didn't really live up to um, some of its own ingredients, some of its own components. Um, and even though uh, I watched it this time and thought, wow, I must have been in a really bad mood last time because I did enjoy it a lot more. Again, it still wasn't really to the degree that I used to. And so therefore I think that while um, it's far better than I thought the last time I watched it, I still think some of those things that I realised the last time, I can't unrealise because I still think that they hold true. Is the story as a whole 
as good as the Cybermen in front of St. Paul's? No. Is the story as a whole as good as its villain Tobias Vaughan? No. And that's kind of what I mean about it being not as big as some of its components and therefore being one of Doctor Who's most successful optical illusions. Vaughan is bigger than the story is in, I think, and he might be the best villain we've ever had in the show up to this point. Kevin Stoney plays a character that's not that dissimilar to his previous turn as Mavic Chen. Both ally themselves with one of Doctor Who's most enduring creations, like the big two essentially, Mavic Chen with the Daleks, Vaughn with the Cybermen, and both naively believe that they can usurp them. Both are wrong and both go some way to becoming insane along the way. Vaughn's a different kind of crazy from Chen, but make no mistake, he's just as crazy. He remains selfish and single-minded, even when inevitably betrayed by the Cybermen, and he refuses to help the Doctor out of a desire to save the world. Instead, he just wants revenge on the Cybermen, and even thinks he can still nab some power out of it. He's such a towering presence that it really highlights how heroic the Doctor can be. The Doctor has massive balls, waltzing back to Vaughan so casually and just saying, I, I hope I haven't called it an inconvenient moment, but I, I, I would rather uh, like a word with you. This is kind of a glimpse of what will one day be called the oncoming storm, and it's wrapped up in that like unassuming, unlikely exterior of Croton's Doctor. And that's the same Doctor who earlier on had just resigned himself to being captured and sat down to play cards. Now, when I ask is the story as good as those individual moments, I'm well aware that they are a key component of it, and so what's the point in separating them? Those key moments take place in the invasion, and so the invasion must be judged by them. And that's why I, I do think, I've come back around to thinking that it is a cracking story. I only mention it because I do think that those elements do a lot of the heavy lifting. Those moments and characters along the way, I think, are more successful than the pacing and the plot. That's what I mean by Vaughan being bigger than the story he's in. That's what I mean by the Cybermen marching in St. Paul's tricking us into maybe thinking that the invasion is a stronger story than it is. But only marginally, like I say, I'm almost fully back to loving it as much as I used to. And it's very easy to see why Nicholas Courtney, as the Brig, came back and kept coming back. He transcends what is a rather staid and thankless role and turns it into something with more warmth and spark than these sorts of characters tend to have. He is the real deal. He sort of teases Isabel where most others would have played it as far more cold and aloof. When she calls him a bigot, he reacts almost amused and it is a very considered performance. As is Isabel, to be honest. She starts off a bit irritating, but I do come to warm to her over the course of the story. She strikes up a very sort of like fun friendship with Zoe. And she also has, uh, speaking of fun, she has a lot of fun making fun of Jamie with Zoe. They make a nice trio and it would have been really interesting to see her join the TARDIS and stay on with Pertwee, especially considering that the third Doctor is exiled to her native time and place. Zoe once again kicks ass here and she's fast rising up my list of favourite companions. She gets to uh, bamboozle a computer with how smart she is early on, but I think her crowning glory in this story is when she works out how to set off a sufficient chain reaction of explosions to destroy more Cybermen than was looking likely. You better be right. I am. And she is. I love Zoe. So, am I going to say mixed bag? Not quite. Um, I'd say it used to. I still don't think that the uh, whole package uh, is greater than the sum of its parts. I think uh, some of those parts are uh, actually eclipse the story as a whole. So I'm not going to say it's a mixed bag. I still think it's very, very strong. If the story as a whole matched those bursts of inspiration that it has along the way, it might be the greatest story of the marathon so far. But as it is, I think it's the strength of those bursts of inspiration that make this story probably enjoy uh, a, a better reputation than I think it might deserve. Now, I'm not dinging the invasion. I hope that's quite clear. I think the invasion is, I mean, it's eight episodes long, which I still think is too long. However, despite that, I still think it's really, really, really good. I just think if it had hung together, as well as the things it was hanging off, oh, it would be perfect. 
227 episodes down now and I am tantalised about what's to come given some of the elements that have been introduced here. The quiet dawn, then out they come. <laughs> Doctor Who iconography, pure and simple. Unit's theme tune is way too jaunty, particularly when the music does such a good job elsewhere. As ever, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this premonition of the Pertwee era, then you know how YouTube works. Please do give it a like and share it with all your might. It really does help. And what do you think of the invasion? Are the best bits of it better than the whole package or is it an out and out classic? Is this a step up for the Cybermen or do you think this should have been a third outing for the Intelligence or the Yeti? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you back here soon for the debut of one of Doctor Who's greatest ever writers. So if you don't wanna miss that, hit the subscribe button, clang the cloister bell and I'll meet you on the planet of the Gons.